So hello and welcome to this lesson in our study of optimization two. So this happens to be the fifth lesson. And in this lesson, we will talk about the two phase method, also known as the phase one, phase two method. So if you could recall in our previous video, that is lesson four, we talked about the big M method, which we employed to solve LP problems when we have to introduce artificial variables as the basis. Okay. So the two phase method is an alternative method to the big M method. So that means that we can use that over the big M method. Okay. And it is called two phase method because the solution is arrived by going through two phases, phase one and phase two, okay? So in a two-phase method, the whole procedure of solving a linear programming problem involving artificial variables is divided into two phases. So we are going to look at what happens at the phase one, and then we'll take a look at what happens at the phase two. So for the phase one, we form a new objective function by assigning zero to every original sorry to every original variable including the slack and surplus variables and we assign a minus one to each of the artificial variables if we want to maximize the sum of the artificial variables okay all right so note this we assign a coefficient of minus one to the artificial variables if we want to maximize the sum of the artificial variables but if we want to minimize the sum of the artificial variables then we assign a plus one coefficient to them so know the difference okay all right but in this video at the phase one we will always be maximizing the sum of the artificial variables so we'll be having negative one coefficient okay all right so after doing that then we use the simplex method to try to eliminate the artificial variables from the basis okay all right so if you are able to eliminate the artificial variables from the basis then the solution at the end of phase one is the initial basic feasible solution for phase two okay don't worry as we solve examples with it you really understand the statements okay so let's go to phase two so for phase two the original objective function is used and coefficient of the artificial variables is zero so that the artificial variable is removed from the calculation process so the aim of the phase one is to make sure we eliminate all the artificial variables right from the calculation process so by the time we get to the phase two we want to ensure that no artificial variable is present if any of them is present we have a certain decision that we will make and we'll come to that okay all right so after doing this then the simplest algorithm is used to find the optimal solution all right so I want you to note these points. So at the end of phase one, we can have these cases, okay? So we are going to discuss the cases, there are three. So the first case is that we can get the maximum, all right, our maximum being zero, and at least one artificial variable is present in a basis with positive value. So when we have this, then it means that no feasible solution exists for the original linear programming problem. Okay, so that's for case one. And for case two, when the maximum of Z is zero, note that I said that in this video, we always try to maximize the sum of the artificial variables at the phase one, right? That's the auxiliary LP problem. So for the case two, if the maximum of Z is zero, 
and no artificial variable is present in the basis, then it means that the basis consists of only decision variables and hence we move to phase 2 to obtain an optimal basic feasible solution on the original LP problem. And then the third case is that when we have the maximum of z being 0 and at least one artificial variable is present in the basis at zero value so that means it is present though but the value is zero then it means that a feasible solution to the auxiliary lp problem is also a feasible solution to the original lp problem so now in order to arrive at the basic feasible solution we may proceed directly to phase two or else eliminate the artificial variable and then proceed to phase two right so i know what we did now is english and some of you might have understood it and others maybe no but don't worry okay as we solve examples the understanding will start coming okay so because we said we always want to maximize our auxiliary lp problem in phase one we also want to do the same thing in phase two we want to just do maximization right so that means that if the problem is given to us in minimization we would have to convert it towards a maximization problem so let's learn how to change a minimization problem into a maximization problem okay so any linear ma uh, minimization problem can be viewed as an equivalent linear maximization problem and vice versa right so you can convert minimization problem to a maximization problem the same way you can convert a maximization problem to a minimization problem okay so specifically when you want to minimize what we have here right it is equal to the maximum of the same thing just that now our cj will have a coefficient of negative one all right and this will be subject to the same set of constraints and if z is the optimal value of the left hand side this is the left hand side then minus z is the optimal value of the right hand side expression Okay, I think I should illustrate this more so that the understanding becomes better, right? So, let's say I have this to be minimize z equals x1 plus x2 subject to this constraint. Let's say 5x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 20. And let's say 2x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to let's say 30 okay so this is the minimization problem and i want to convert it to a maximization problem so converting it to a maximization problem it be maximize z equals then you multiply the objective function through by negative one right so you have this i hope you get it subject to the same set of constraints we don't touch them so 5x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 20 then 2x1 plus 5x2 less than or equal to 30 so you see when you minimize this problem you are going to get an optimal solution let's say z equals a and when you maximize this you're going to get let's say z equals minus a so that means that to find the value the minimum value of this so just be z to be equal to minus minus a which should give you a which will be the same thing as what we had here that's the reason we are saying that if z is the optimal value of the left hand side expression then minus z is the optimal value of the right hand side expression okay so we have talked plenty right let's get into business by solving examples so we are going to solve two examples right so we are going to cover two of the cases and we'll solve example on each of them all right to make sure you really understand it so the first question says find a solution to this lpp using the two-phase method 
so LPP means linear programming problem okay so the question says minimize z equals 5x1 plus 2x2 plus 10x3 subject to these constraints all right you know there's a non-negativity constraint all right so we said that we want to deal with just maximization all right so that means that we have to convert our problem towards a maximization problem but note you can solve it in the minimization way okay so i've written a note here we can maintain a problem as a minimization problem and solve it but for the purpose of uniformity in the video we we'll convert all problems to a maximization one before solving it right if you solve it directly using the minimization you are going to get it correct right and you when you also convert it to a maximization problem when you follow the techniques you're also going to get it correct but for you not to be confused i think you have to adopt just one method and stick to it since either of them are going to give you the solution right so in this video we're always going to convert our problems to a maximization one and solve it okay so we have to convert the lpp into a maximization problem so you could see that we had minimize that equals this here so that means to convert it to a minimization a maximization problem would have to multiply the objective function by negative one right but we are going to maintain the constraint we won't do anything to them so this will give our way what we can have here but note that the optimal solution will be what negative what z right so why don't I do it this be z this be z and this rather be z star right okay so we can write this in standard form so when you write this in standard form we are going to get this you know um the equal the inequality here is less than or equal to so to change that constraint into the standard form or into the equality form we have to add a slack variable and this one is greater than or equal to so we have to subtract a surplus and after that we add an artificial variable so that's what you can find here right and note that in the case of the big m method where we're assigning either minus m or plus m to the artificial variables that that was their contribution to the objective function depending on whether you were maximizing or minimizing in the case of the phase one phase two they have zero coefficients okay all right so this is going to be the model in standard form okay so even sometimes in some books they decide not to even bring this when you are writing it since it's going to go through phases so it's when you get to the phase one then you write the model for the phase one then when you get to phase two phase two they write the model for phase two okay so for phase one we are going to get maximize that equals minus a2 right so in phase one we're always going to try to maximize the sum of the artificial variables but you see here we only have what one of them right and i told you from here these were all the reasons why we went through these rules that we form a new objective function by assigning zero to every original variable including slack and surplus variable and minus one to each of the artificial variables if you want to maximize the sum of the artificial variables right so since you are maximizing we are going to get minus a2 right if we're minimizing then we'll get a2 so you are going to maximize z equals minus a2 subject to the same set of constraints right subject to these constraints so when we write our tableau for it right this is going to be the coefficient of basis the basis x1 x2 s3 s1 is to a2 right hand side in our theta so we can fill the constraint form by here right so one zero minus one one and the rest so that's what you can find here right so these are the constraints and when it comes to the cg which is the coefficient of the 
variables in the basis you know we said all of them you know all of them here are zero the exception of a2 which has a coefficient of what minus one and here too the coefficient of s1 in the base um, in the objective function is zero that of a2 in the objective function is what minus one then we find for what zg so zg at this point for instance it is zero times one plus minus one times zero which will give us zero the one here will be zero the one here will be zero times zero plus minus one times one which will be minus one so we do that to compute all our zj right and we can also compute the right hand side which will be zero times ten plus minus one times ten which should give us minus ten right then we just do cg minus zj so zero minus zero 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 minus minus one one 0 minus minus 1, 1, 0 minus 0. And we get this. So when we get this, you know, since this is a maximization problem, our target is to make sure that all CJ minus ZJ are less than or equal to 0 so that an optimal solution can be arrived. And that's the stopping criteria. But we have 1 and 1 here. That means we've not yet attain our optimal solution right so this s2 and s3 one of them either of them can enter the solution okay and you're going to get the same answer just that depending on the one that you choose you might do more iterations okay so here we are going to let s2 enter the solution so if s2 is enter the solution then we have to use a minimum ratio test theta to know which of the basis is going towards leave you know this our key column and we have we want to use the minimum ratio test to know our key rule so to get the theta value here it is going to be you know since this is the key column right it's going to be 10 over 0 which will give us infinity so we write that we don't write it we get 10 over 1 which will give us 10 so you can see that this is the smallest um number here right so that means that a2 will have to leave the basin for s2 to enter and here this is going to be our pivot element right so we can write it in this form right just from the table here and we need the a2 portion since it is leaving the basis and it's not important again so you know one here is the pivot element and we always want to make the pivot element has a coefficient of one and it is one so and um, the um, the pivot and we always want to make it one and this is one so we don't touch root two and we always want anything under under it or beneath above it or underneath it be, be zero and that's the case here okay so that means we also not touch root one so we will use this for our next iteration right so now a2 left for s2 to enter the basis and the coefficient of s2 2 is what zero in the auxiliary lp model right in the auxiliary ap model is only a2 which has a coefficient of minus one there is zero then we write these and so our one zero minus one one zero 0 1 1 0 minus 1 this is the right hand side right so we have to find for our cj so you know because everything here is zero when you multiply you are going to get zero out um for the cj right for the zj and the cj means the coefficients of s1 s2 s3 s1 s2 in the objective function which are all zero as well so when we take the difference between them we are always going to get zero right and our maximum value is also going to be zero so this means that since all cj minus zj is less than or equal to zero optimal solution is arrived with x1 0 s2 10 s3 0 and the maximum of z was zero right okay so mostly when we get here that becomes the end of phase one and let's go to this case for you to see something so it says that if the maximum of z is zero and no artificial variable is present in the basis 
This means that the basis consists of only decision variables and hence remove to phase 2 to obtain an optimal basic solution on the original LP problem. So you can see that here in the base you don't have any artificial variable, right? That means that we can proceed to the phase 2. So since all the artificial variables has or have been eliminated, we can proceed to phase 2. And note, the solution at the end of phase 1 is the initial basic feasible solution for phase 2. So that means we are going to carry this same solution to phase 2. Just that in phase 2, we are going to use the original objective function. So what we have here are going to change and what we have here to change. Okay. So this is going to be phase 2. So we have the same thing, just that in phase 2, we use the original objective function, right? So this was our original objective function. So you can see that. So the coefficients of x1 is minus 5, x2 is minus 2, x3 is minus 10, and we have them. So we can come and the coefficient of x2 is what? Minus 2. So we can compute our zgs. You are going to get this. Our right hand side will give us minus 20. Then when you compute cg minus zg, this should give us minus 5, 0, minus 8. So as you can see there. All right. And since all our cg minus zg is less than or equal to 0, it means that optimal solution is arrived with the value of variables as s1 equals 0, s2 equals 10, s3 equals 0, and the maximum of z, right, equals minus 20. So that means that the minimum of z to be, no, the question to us to find the minimum, right? So it's being negative of the answer we had for the maximum, which would be what? 20. So that means that the minimum value here is 20. Okay. So, yeah, that's how we use the phase one, phase two to solve LPP, right? So LP problems. So now let's take a second example. It says minimize z equals x1 minus 2x2 minus 3x3 subject to these constraints, right? So we would want to convert our problem to a maximization problem. So can you pause the video and do that and see if you get it correct? Okay, so in 4, 3, two one all right so this is going to be what we are going to get when we convert the problem to a maximization problem all right we we'll just multiply the um objective function here by negative one we maintain the what constraint and in the answer we had for the maximization that's the optimal value the negative of it is going to be the value, the optimal value for the minimization problem. Okay. So you write this in standard form and we have something like this. Okay. All right. So I like told you in some books, they don't bring this. Or they decide to write the standard form as we go to each phase. Okay. All right. So probably this is going to be the standard for when we get to phase two. So for phase one, we are going to try to what, maximize the sum of the artificial variables. And we have two artificial variables here, A1 and A2, right? And because you are maximizing them, it's going to minus A1 minus A2. Right? Okay. Subject to these constraints, So we can then draw a simplex tableau for it. And note that in the auxiliary LP model, when it comes to the objective function, right, it is only the A's, the artificial variables, which have coefficients of minus 1. The rest, 0. So that's why you can find here. And we compute you know, the coefficients of A1 and A2, which are the basis are negative 1, negative 1, right? So we compute our ZGs, right? Which are going to give us 0, minus 4, minus 7, minus 1, minus 1. 
So when you compute our CJ minus ZJ, we'll get 0, 4, 7, 0, 0, right? By now, you shouldn't have a problem filling in the various elements in the portions in the, this one, simplex tablet, because we've done that several times in our previous video. So if you have any problem, please go to the previous videos to watch it, okay? All right. So you can see that it's a maximization problem. And the stopping criteria is that all our CJ minus ZJ should be less than or equal to zero. But this is the case we have 4 and 7 here. So the more positive one will have to enter. So 7 will enter, right? And since 7 is entering, that means that to get our minimum ratio test values, it will be the right-hand side 2 over our the value here, which is 3. And this will be 1 over 4, which is 1 over 4. And the least one leaves. So that means 1 over 4 is smaller than 2 over 3. So that means A2 is going to leave out the basis for S3 to enter. And note that this is where the key column and the key row intersect, right? They meet. So that means 4 is going to be the pivot element. In our next iteration, we want to make that one 1. And everything above it to so underneath it was 0. So we eliminate A2 right and we have this so to make for one we have to say root two is equal to one over four root two and that will give us this here and we have to make this zero right so the way to achieve that is here root one is equal to root one minus three root two when we do this we'll get this so this will go into the next iteration and that's the values we can see here right Okay, so we have to compute our ZJs because you know the CJs in there is very simple to get them. And the coefficient of x3 in the auxiliary LP problem is zero. So computing our ZJs, we are going to get minus one times minus seven over two, which is seven over two, minus one times you know since we have zero here, everything here will be zero. So we are going to have these ZJs, right? And when we compute our ZJ minus ZJ, we'll get what we have here. And we can see that all CJ minus ZJ are less than or equal to zero. That means that the stopping criteria is met. So the optimal solution is arrived with values S1 equals zero, S2 equals zero, and X2 equals one and four, all right? And the maximum of Z is minus five over four. So that means the minimum of Z is five over four. And we can see that at this stage, even though we have the the stopping criteria is met, we couldn't eliminate this particular um, artificial variable, right? And it also has a positive value, which is five on four. So it means that our solution is not what's feasible because the artificial variable A1 appears in the basis with positive value 5 on 4. So let's come to the cases. I I said that in, I think that was the second, the second case or the first case. Okay, that was the first case. Oh, mm -hmm. so it says if this is there and at least one artificial variable is present in the basis with positive value, this means a no feasible solution exists for the original LP problem, right? And case three, that's what we didn't solve a question under. So, but if you finish solving it and at least one artificial variable is present in the basis but has a zero value, that means that we can proceed to um, phase three. So for instance, at the end of this, problem if we had had a1 appearing in the basis though but the value being zero right then we could have proceeded to the next phase which is the phase two so that's what the case three says right Okay, so 
yes this what we are going to do on the two phase method or phase one phase two method okay so this is a try question for you all right so try to solve this it's already a maximization problem so there'll be no need for a conversion right and if you solve this correctly you're supposed to get these values as your optimal solution all right so thank you very much this is going to be everything on there phase one phase two so see you in the next lesson